All right, so I have been playing with Boot C recently, so I'm looking at um, how we can use Image Mode Rel for our, our data plane in um, Red Hat OpenStack services on OpenShift. And as part of that, I thought, you know, it'd be good to be more familiar with this system. And one of the things I like to do when I'm familiarizing myself with these systems is just to use it at home, like use it wherever I can. So for example, with OpenShift, I run all my applications on, on an OpenShift node so that I'm familiar with that process. and in, and through doing that, that kind of builds the confidence that I can solve basically any problem that comes up. And that, that's where I want to be with this technology. So then I can provide support to other engineers or to support people or to customers as they use these products and they can get the, the best value out of them. So to um, use Boot C at home, I thought of a couple of options. One of them is I want to build a NAS. I need some some local storage for backup since my server's died and I'm just running that that single node now. So I thought maybe I'll build a boot C NAS with some ZFS Z pools set up. So that would be an interesting project. But the most immediate thing that I could do is just install it um, on my laptop and have a boot C image for my laptop. Now the Fedora boot C images aren't desktop images. They don't have GNOME or KDE or any kind of graphical environment. They're, they're basically just a core OS image is, is all they are. Um, so you know, I need to add all the different components to make it a desktop. So if we look here, um, this is the container file I'm using. So when we build a boot C image, if you're not familiar with it, it's basically you're building a container and you can test it just like container using Podman. And then you can turn around and boot a physical system from it. So we're just including a kernel in that container image so that when it runs on hardware, it boots from that kernel and it's able to, to do everything it needs to do. So I went through a few iterations of this container file. Uh, in the first iteration, I just tried to install GNOME Desktop. But um, that obviously isn't enough because I, I was well, it was enough to boot into GNOME. Don't get me wrong, that, that worked fine. Um, but it was missing like Wi-Fi drivers and things like that. So... What I did was I just started a, a VM of a normal uh, Fedora workstation install and I just checked which groups were enabled by default on that system. So for example, if we go, so th this is that same image that we're building and we do group list. Uh, so yeah, so if we just do podman run on that image our pseudo DNF group list dash dash hidden dash dash installed. This will show us all of the groups that are installed. So I just run this command on a normal Fedora workstation install to figure out uh, which groups were enabled there by default. So we'll just wait for this to finish and we'll see which, which groups we've got installed. So you can see there we do basic graphical container management core. We've got hardware support. That's probably where the, the Wi-Fi driver is coming from. So all I did then was add that to the container file in this line here. So DNF group install, and I just installed those those modules. Um, removing NordVPN for now, because yeah, that's not working in the, the boot C environment. And then these were just the packages that I had overlaid previously in my um, Silverblue install. So we go, we might still be able to see the previous install. Yeah, so I just I just copied all these and pasted them in there and installed them in the new version. So you can see there that it's it's booted from this OS tree image now. And we do boot C status. So you can see I, I'm booted from this boot C image. So once we once I decided on what I needed in this container file, you can see I've stolen some things there from um, the uBlue folks. This was basically a uBlue template and then I just destroyed it and turned it into my own. So once you've got all those things, you can just do a podman build on that. Now I'm doing a, a DNF upgrade. So if there's updates available, it will do that um, here. So obviously no updates since I last built it because I only just built it and it tags the image and then you just push the image to wherever you need to push it to. So that will upload the image and then if things have changed, you can just do a boot C update and that will um, change to the updated version of the image. First there, now I don't think anything would have changed, but we can check by doing a boot C update. And we see that there's no changes to it. So the hash is still the same. So 
um, yeah, all I will do is periodically just rebuild this container. That will do a DNF update in the container. And if there's any new packages that need to be installed or updated, that will happen. I'll push that image and then I'll just do a boot C update on my laptop to change to it. So how did I get here from Silverblue, I guess is the, is the bigger question. So what I did was a boot C switch. So I was, I was booted into Silverblue and then I built this container image. I pushed it to Quay and then I just did a boot C switch and I waited for that to download the container. It writes it to the file system. So we look in mount uh, and we want to grab for compose. So you can see there's a compose FS file system there that's mounted on root. And then here we grab for sub vol. We can see these are all of my other volumes. So the BTR, BTRFS petitions, we've got sysroot, which is mounting root. So I do ls root you can see that is the the root of the file system we can see we got the os tree and the previous deployments under deploy for example so there's the the previous um, os tree installs and we can see that like everything else is it's just mounted from btrfs so that's all the, the sub volumes that I have there. So yeah, that, that's basically it. The only real difference is this ComposeFS file system, which is mounted on root. And otherwise it's basically just like using Silverblue at this point. I've still got all my flat pack, all my flat packs installed. So I can use, you know, anything from flat pack. Um, and I just thought this would give me a bit more exposure to Bootsy. Hopefully some problems come up during some of these upgrades and I get to dive a little bit deeper into what's causing those problems and in doing that learn a bit more about uh, Bootsy. Um, and then the other one that I worked on as I said was and yeah the other one that I've been working on as I said was just the um, EDPM Bootsy stuff so just building images with all the requirements for um, our EDPM nodes in OpenStack. So um, what I'm trying to do is layer in our container images so that we don't need to uh, use Ansible to write them out each time. We're going to layer them in, have systemd services that will be able to start them and that'll be like a tech preview thing to see um, how good Bootsy fits the purpose and image mode rel works for, for OpenStack. Uh, if you want to try that out, I will make sure that container file is on GitHub. You can take a look. I'll link through the, the Bootsy documentation as well so you can read about some of the things that are involved in, in working with that. It's basically very similar to RPM OS tree, but you get to use DNF commands to install things in your container and then test it locally like I, like I showed. You know, I can exec into that image. So what, what we can do is we can just start that image. So uh, we do podman run. We'll create one called Laptop Boot C, Podman PS. We can see it's running there and we can exec into that. Now, this is the image that's actually running on my laptop. So I want to see if configuration files are in the, in the right places. Um, if I want to see that the repos that I wanted enabled, like for example, I added the tail scale repo. So just making sure that's there, for example. And then once I'm happy with the container that I've built, then I can just do a boot C update or a boot C switch into that image and then actually run it on my laptop. Obviously that requires a reboot, but I think it's pretty cool. And um, if you're used to using silver blue, then it's basically exactly the same, but you get to use boot C and then play with it in containers. So hopefully that's interesting. If you have any questions, hit me up below. Uh, as I said, I'll link that documentation. I'll link this container file if you want to build it for yourself and try it out. See you in the next video.